My name is Kelly Martin, and I teach English at the Spring Creek campus. And I want to share with you today, or at this moment, how to set up, or in other words, create a test. Actually, I should say to create a test again in Top Hat. Now, I have been using Top Hat for at least six to seven years and, and am very familiar with Top Hat tests. And so what I'm going to begin with is showing you what an actual two-question Top Hat, Top Hat quiz or test, Top Hat calls them both test similar to Canvas might look like. And then I'll show you how I created these questions. And in subsequent videos, I will show you how to set up the quiz in terms of randomizing questions, assigning to students, and the like, and how to even create a course, add content, and so on. So this is my quiz number one example. And I just titled them both the same. Quiz one example up here, quiz one example here. Uh, you will see my quiz, as I said, contains two questions. And I made each one worth five points each. So a total of obviously 10 points. Now, when you set up your quiz, which again, I'll show you shortly, you can enter any instructions you want and parameters in terms of due dates, how long or how many hours students have to work on the quiz, um, just any instructions, helpful information that they cannot revisit questions, that this will be proctored and monitored. And this last point is very important, is that I would be up front with students and tell them that A, if they click away from the test, open up another browser, or um, again, just click away if they were open up a Word document or spend more than five seconds or 10 seconds, 30 seconds, tell whatever the settings that you determine are, that that will be reported to you. So it will not be a surprise to students if you were to write or let's say give a student, a, a student, 70 percent, <clears throat> excuse me, because he or she clicked outside of the page and opened up another page. Now, with that, Top Hat will not tell you, I believe, which page unless, again, they change things around on me and are constantly updating everything. But I believe they will not tell you what actual page they went and visited or if they opened up a Word document or a PDF document, that level of specificity. But it will tell you the student navigated away from the test for 10 seconds, 20 seconds, 10 minutes, 5 minutes, um, and so on. So that's what I mean by parameters is, again, instructions, parameters, being up front with students letting them know what you expect of them and just giving them the clearer the better and that's just as we all know a good teaching practice and principle anyway so real quick the first question i set up is a fill in the blank and you will see up here i can show myself the correct answer again i'm in i or i didn't actually say this to begin with that i'm in the teacher screen and once students have started completing the test or quiz or, and or submitted it, I can show their responses per question. So again, this is fill in the blank. It's very simple to create. You don't need any advanced programming or any sophisticated navigation skills or anything of the sort. And you will see the next question I created is a matching question. And I just typed in match each sentence, each sentence, I cannot talk today, excuse me, to the correct type. And 
because I teach English, I just made these two questions relate to a topic that we cover in English 1301, which is comma usage or commas in general. And obviously, I have, I'm going to eat bread, salad, and pizza. Sentence needs commas because it contains a series of nouns. So you'll see each one coordinates, and I've added an additional answer. Sentence needs a comma because it is an introductory phrase. Sentence does not need a comma. So I have four options to match with, but only three types of sentences. And again, very easy to create. And so this is, let me turn off my nifty highlighter guy here what the quiz looks like in the light, so to speak. And now I'll show you how I created it. So I am first going to go, once I have my course actually created, again, that will be in a later video, simply click on Create. And right to the right of the little drop-down menu, is Top Hat Test. And up here, I can just click on whatever you want to title it. Uh, we'll say Test Final. And then right here, just for consistency's sake, I'm going to say Test Final. We could title it final test, final exam, midterm exam, second quiz, third quiz, first online quiz, whatnot. And then in the far right corner, you will see the words unsaved changes because I've obviously made changes by naming it test, comma, final, test, comma, final. And so every, I, I'm, I happen to be paranoid. But every probably minute I click on save and then unsave changes, changes to all changes were saved. Like that. Obviously, and sorting and long answer. This is going to be more of your paragraph style answers. So we're going to do very simple, basic, multiple choice. And I always title my test question number one and then the type of question it is multiple choice now you could quickly delete this or easily delete this if you change your mind and type in instead um commas in a series and recalling the first um, example i showed you in the completed test quiz was, I'm, I, if I can remember correctly, I'm going to eat bread, salad, and pizza. So that's what I mean by a series. You put, I'm going to eat bread, comma, salad, comma, and pizza, period. So enter the question here, which of the following, and again, I'm using English examples because that's what I know best, which of the following sentences correctly uses a comma. And then you just simply type in the, in this case, two, if you want to add a third multiple or third choice, you want to add a fourth choice, and you just type in the sentence. I am going to eat salad. I'm just going to make my uh, first sentence here, actually it should be bread and salad. Anyway, I'm gonna make my first sentence here the correct one. You can randomize the answers or shuffle the answers and shuffle, randomize the questions within that, the whole entire test or quiz as I also mentioned earlier. Bread, salad, and pizza, period. This is my correct answer. For simplicity's sake, I'm just not going to sit here and make you watch me type in four more or two more answer choices. 
But for now, I am going to eat bread and salad and pizza, which is obviously not correct. You don't need the comma when you have and, and, and. And um, to answer correctly, students need to choose any correct answer. I only have one correct answer, so that's not an issue. Um, all correct answers. So let's say you want to have select, your multiple choice question is select all of the sentences that need a comma. And there, you give a choice of five sentences, and there are three sentences that actually need commas or a comma then that would be where the all correct answers. So you would just mark correct answer, correct answer, correct answer, and then leave the other two um, correct answer check boxes unchecked. Add another version. We will get to this in another video, but simply you can type a very similar question, except I'm going to the market for strawberries, blueberries, and grapes. A similar structure, except that the students will not all get the exact same, in this case, list of nouns or things, to use a very generic word, to eat, or types of fruit. And then grading options. Participation, this is something that Top Hat does a little differently than, let's say, Canvas, is if you want to award points for simply attempting to answer the question, that's what is or top hat means, at least, by participation. Correctness is simply, you know, I want to award this question in points. And I personally don't award participation points because these are pretty uh, clear cut. But I understand with equations, formulas, so on. Um, or long answers, you might want to award attempts. Uh, I'm sorry, I stuttered there, but attempts at answering the question fully or completely. So I'm just going to click save. There's my first question. I can edit it. I can export it. So let's say you created this and you're like, you know what, I think I want to use that same question in a practice quiz from chapter five, you can export it, again, copy, paste, same thing as import, export, within Top Hat, anywhere within your Top Hat course content. And of course you can delete it. And let me just show you, so down here I wanna create question two, and don't worry, I'm not gonna make you sit through watching me type actual questions and answer choices. But, <clears throat> excuse my voice, I wanna do a, Long answer, so this is, again, more like a paragraph, multi-paragraph, semi-essay question. I believe the word limit is 500 words. So if you're assigning a five-page research essay, you don't necessarily want to do that here. But we're, I'm just going to title this question number two, paragraph answer, commas, with introductory phrases. And then uh, write, don't no, worry, I'm not gonna do anything else with this question beyond this and the correctness points. Write a paragraph that uses at least Go back here and change this to correctly uses at least two commas with introductory phrases. This one's a little more work, so I'm going to make it worth 15 points and click save. And of course, this you'd have to manually go in and grade. And I haven't saved in a while as indicated by unsafe changes, save, close, and now in my 
table of contents. I can see test final. Here is the quiz example that I showed you at the beginning. And again, test final is the one I just created. And once you're ready to, to assign the test, simply click on start test. And students will have to enter this four letter, or excuse me, five alphanumeric code and view proctor report. This is where it will show you how many students have started the quiz, where they are in the quiz test, I should say, and if they've navigated away, how many, for how long, all that fun information. And they will simply, on their end, enter this alphanumeric code when they're ready to begin the test. And each test or quiz has a unique alphanumeric code. So you don't have to worry about pasting this anywhere or changing it per course or per quiz or test yourself. It auto top hat, meaning auto generates the code for students. Um, and when you're ready to end a test after a day, after three hours, after 48 hours, again, whatever, time limit you set, you simply click on in test and you will see that it is no longer red, which I didn't point out while ago, but while the test was active, this icon was red. Mm -hmm.